Alrighty, shalom and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cut of the Jib. It is great to be with all of you here today. Make sure to go and hit that subscribe button, the like button. Leave us a comment on this episode. Let us know if you like the cut of the jib. All right? Or the cut of my jib, rather. See if... Let us know. Let us know. Now, I had this idea of doing a new kind of show on this channel, doing something extra to kind of mix in with our politics and our music analysis and all of that stuff that we do on this channel, which is in many ways all over the place of me essentially giving the cut of my jib. And I was thinking to myself, you know, there's been some TV shows and movies that people have forgotten. Some of them could really be diamonds in the rough. There's some great stuff out there that may be hard to find. It's never talked about. Or maybe it's just so incredibly bad that people don't care about it, don't want to talk about it. And it's kind of left in the ether. I said to myself, you know what? That might be interesting to kind of look over some of these things. Because some of these movies and TV shows that I want to know a little bit about that I may remember as a younger man, I say, I wonder if anybody's talking about these things on YouTube. Quite a few of them, people are not. They have totally and utterly forgotten about them. And the first episode here, and we'll decide whether or not to continue on doing this kind of thing on this uh, channel, along with all the other stuff that we do on here, by gauging you guys' reaction to this. Now, first of all, let me go back to 2004. I ended up watching my very first episode of Entourage, and I think it was the season two premiere. I was at a friend's house. He said, have you seen this show, Entourage? I said, no, never, never heard of it. And when he played me that first episode, I was hooked. Especially to the character of the agent, Ari Gold, played by Jeremy Piven. Everybody, stop. I didn't go to the Lakers game because they were playing the fucking Bobcats. And I came here today because I thought this was a session on how my wife could learn to communicate, how to answer a question without a question. Basic Humanity 101, which I thought, given your wall of fucking diplomas, you could easily fix. Or if you couldn't, you could give her a pill that could either fix it or make her a mute. But now, to turn around and gang up on me, I have work to do. I have hundreds of clients to deal with. And just so we're clear, I don't care about any of them. They're all just a number, like wife number one and therapist number seven. Good day. I could have cared less about Vincent Chase. I could have cared less about his manager, E. I thought that uh, that guy... Um, Johnny Drama, played by Kevin Dillon, has some very interesting autistic energy to him. But this character of Ari Gold, the guy was just a complete jerk. But he had redeeming qualities about him. And amazing comedic timing. Because of that TV show, I got to be a fan of Jeremy Piven, and I decided to look through his filmography. Find out what kind of uh, Diamonds in the Rough are within his filmography, TV shows that he had been in, and so on and so forth. Hey, you know, the first place I went to was the Larry Sanders Show. The Larry Sanders Show, all of us have probably seen at least one episode of that. And if you haven't, oh my gosh, you need to go and check out the Larry Sanders Show. But I was searching Pirate Bay. This is where I would go and get all my movies and TV shows and all this stuff. And I was looking through his filmography. There was this TV show that he was in for only a year. From 1998 to 1999. Called Cupid. I knew nothing about this show. But it said that Jeremy Piven was the star of this show. He had the main role of this show. So 
I go onto the Pirate Bay. I go and I start downloading it. I'm downloading it episode by episode. Just going to watch the first one here, see if I like the cut of the jib of the first episode. I did that, and it was a very interesting concept for a show. It was something like I had never seen this when I was in high school and in college from 1998 through 1999, which is when this show aired. It aired on ABC. I don't remember any sort of promotion for this show. I don't remember anything about this. Nothing at all. And so what happens is the show starts... And it starts within this singles group. They're having a discussion. You got Dr. Claire Allen played by that Apollo Marshall trying to, you know, kind of get order in the courtroom, if you will. She gets a call. And this is what happens. Because he was picked up at Erie and Clark for drunk and disorderly. Why isn't he sleeping it off at some precinct house? Well, there was no point. The breathalyzer was negative. They found him brawling with a pimp. Mm -hmm. It seems the fellow was standing on the corner offering to find people dates. The pimp? I know, the patient. The pimp took umbrage. Well, naturally, you thought of me. Now, there's more to it than that, but uh, you'll see for yourself. Well, I assume his name is John Doe. It's good instincts, Claire. Now, you've been working on that follow-up to your first book for a long time now. How's it coming? Honestly, it's not. I'm still researching, you know, considering returning the advanced money. I hate to admit this, but... Love and romance from a scientific standpoint may be a dry well. Why do you ask? Oh, sorry. It's a Valentine's Day conspiracy. I don't blow my own horn, so I end up on wrapping paper looking like a fat winged baby. There you go. Look at that, huh? He thinks he's Cupid? Keep your advance money. There's your bestseller. Never worn a diaper in my life. You'll never hear me go, Scoop! I'll never be that guy. <laughs> The first half of this first episode, of this pilot episode, you see the therapy sessions between that of Jeremy Piven's character, Cupid, and Paula Marshall's character, Dr. Claire Allen. You see Cupid not necessarily given the right advice to some of the staff because, see, that all the staff really like him. They find him to be funny. They find him to be insightful in many ways. But now it is time for him to be let out of the institution. And so, this is what happens. There's no danger to himself or others. Therefore, I am recommending to this competency committee his immediate release. Additionally, he has taken great strides in overcoming his delusional state. He no longer believes he's Cupid. And yet you still have no idea as to his true identity, no name. It's Trevor, Trevor Hale. Well, good, that eases one of my qualms. Does he have any money, a place to go? Uh, uh, well, when we found him, uh, he had $170 with him. Uh, there are a number of shelters that we work with. As $170 you know. isn't gonna last very long in this city. Well, if you review the documents I prepared, you'll see that his aptitude scores are off the charts. He'll have no trouble finding employment. Are you prepared to take responsibility for that? I am. Good. I think I can speak for the committee when I say we'll approve the release of um, Trevor Hale under the following conditions. One, he find employment, and two, you continue to regularly monitor his progress. But Good work as usual, Dr. Allen. Uh, my caseload is such that I... Thank you, Dr. Allen. Next case, please. Thank you. And now, just so you know, the name Trevor Hale, you find out later on that he got that name from a saying that was on a plaque within that of the courthouse. It had the words Trevor, and it had the name, the word Hale somewhere. And Dr. Claire Allen realizes, oh, this is where he got the name. And so one of the things that he has to do is he has to go and get a job. He has to find a place to live. He goes and gets a job at the local pub. Yo, babes, little help. 
Got a problem, buddy? Something you need to get off your chest? Hey, lady, a little help down here? Didn't think so. Small penis. Acting out in public often stems from feelings of sexual inadequacy. You think? Maybe we should test your little theory. See how inadequate I am. Bad move, brother. Later, pal. We've got a budding romance here. Oh. Uh. You ever watch Fame? You know what I have in common with Bruno, Leroy, and Coco? I'm gonna live forever. What about you? You gonna live forever? See, it would saturate my pleasure gland to rip your skin off and make ponchos for the kids. So keep your paws off my shrink here because I'm a frustrated taxidermist and I'd love to go deep on you. You on the same team, Butterbean? Because, as you could tell, he could handle the ratty customers. <laughs> and he does a great job at that. They all seem to really like him at this bar. He then becomes the roommate of the bouncer of said bar. And the back and, f- and the, the, his roommate's played by... by um, by Jeffrey Sams. He plays a character named Champ. And their back and forth between Jeremy Piven and Jeffrey Sams is, well, you can't find this very often. You cannot find this type of chemistry between two characters. Look, lady, there is no Albert here. Mm-hmm. That is the right number. No... Look, who am I? I'm the god of love. Why, you want me to hook you up? Hmm. Or Jeter Tiger. I tell you what, Passion Kettle. Look, the last time we are fresh out of Albert's. No! Give me the fuck! Oh, you know what? There is an Albert here, but he fell off the roof. We're just squatting in his apartment until the Gaja runs out. Give me the phone! Mama? Oh, no. I thought your name was Champ. Damn it. The stage name. You chose that name? Look, stage names, if you can't think of one, they say you should take the name of your first pet. Wow. There's nothing wrong with Albert. Well, you obviously didn't grow up black and overweight in America then. You don't know that. <laughs> Let alone the chemistry that Jeremy Piven's character, uh, Trevor Hale, a.k.a. Cupid, has with his therapist, Paula Marshall, Dr. Claire Allen. Before we begin today, a word about the accommodations. I couldn't find the concierge, so you're the lucky one. Jot this down. Why am I asking you this? That's all you do. You jot. Number one, new tailor. I, I'm Papillon. Number two, new chef. Number three, new clientele. There is a gentleman out there who is hiding ping pong balls in a place where let's just say that I won't be signing up for the tournament. 845, let me guess, one apple fritter, one raspberry jelly, decaf coffee, two sugars and a cream on the side. Hi Claire, nice outfit. Say it's a bit warm today, isn't it? Three problems. Number one, coffee without caffeine. Can someone explain that to me? That's like sex without the spanking. Talking a bad time, Trevor. I'm here. Number two, do you ever wonder why those apple fritters don't taste the same as they used to? No. I'll tell you why. A rap problem like they had simply doesn't go away overnight. Yikes. Number three. Put this way. I'm on maybe six. Predictability, routine. Your whole life is planned. I know what's in that bag because that's always what's in that bag. Is there a point to all this? Now, the thing is that with this show, there was something in there for everybody. I love the comedic aspect of it. But however, I'm not like most guys. I do like a good rom-com. And this show is essentially a rom-com every single episode with a sense of... I don't know, it has a little bit of that comic book era vibe to it, which is very popular today, in the fact that you're wondering, is this guy actually Cupid? Is he actually having to have 100 couples fall in love? Did he really get sent down from Mount Olympus to carry out this task in the real world? It seems like a great contradiction with the world in which he is presented in, in Chicago, in the late 90s. Okay? And they really stick to realism in terms of that in this show. So there's this great, uh, you know, there's this great divide of, like, something does not fit here. But the comedic aspect of it as well is something that I really gravitated towards. Us guys, we could love the comedy aspect of it, And for your girlfriends, they will love the story of what happens with these two people that Cupid, a.k.a. Trevor Hale, tries to, you know, match up. 
you know, so he gets another, you know, he gets another vote. Of, okay. He's, he's five, you know, he's got five people towards his 100, you know, and he's always looking at really quick schemes about how to do this. He has to go to Claire's singles group and he goes, Oh, well, this is fish on a barrel right over here. You know? And so the, his whole mindset is he is learning about human beings and you're wondering, is he really crazy or is he really Cupid? It's one of the two, and you're pulled back and forth every episode saying, oh, no, no, he's definitely a, a crazy human being. Oh, no, 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 he's definitely Cupid. And the way they balance that to where you're constantly wrestling with that throughout this TV show is done brilliantly. Sick. Have missed a day in 5,000 years. Wait a minute, there's tickling. Oh, my God, what's happening? What was that? No arousal, no plateau, just climax? Uh, Trevor, that's really best said when you're alone. <laughs> I'm sick! Is this a cold? I love having a cold. Oh, baby! Now the question is, why, how did this show end? We got a lot more to talk about in terms of this show, but you know, this seems like an amazing concept, right? This seems like a, a concept that appeals to men, appeals to women, you know, and this is something that is like, you know, this is, this is the great in between point here. You know, there's a lot of things in terms of this. One of the things I could tell you is that the storylines do tend to be very formulaic. You know, that, Every single week, there's going to be a couple that either falls in love or something happens to where they don't. You know it's going to be that way each and every single week. And there's always going to be one person in this situation that has something that kind of holds them back. Could be a person with a disability. And one episode, there was a person with a speech impediment that had to learn how to speak in a way that sounded smart, you know? And so Trevor tries to hook her up with the linguist who is trying to help her to sound smart. And, you know, a bunch of stuff ends up happening there. You have an episode where it is, and I think it's the pilot episode where the people that it is that Trevor tries to hook up and the whole time Dr. Claire Allen is saying, no, don't do this. Don't do this. This is stupid. This is a bad idea. Don't do this. You're not Cupid. But you start to see throughout the episode, throughout all the season, the first season, that she's starting to think, is he? He could be Cupid. He could be. But the first episode, she tries to, he tries to hook this lady up with a guy who happens to be married. <laughs> then, you know, there's the episode, The Heart of the Matter, where it is that, um, sadly, the gentleman that uh, he's trying to hook up with this other lady, he ends up dying at the end. And, you know, there, there, there's some heart-wrenching stuff, but some amazing comedic parts of this show. Some of the things that are funnier than you'll find in any TV show today with really quick, hot quips that you don't see on television today. And not only that, there are big guest stars on this show that would be there through the entire episode, not just a, hey, and then be gone. Like you would see... On Entourage, you know, they would have a big, they would have like four or five big celebrities every single episode, and they were just here to just say, hey, and that's about it, you know. But one episode, you know, they had Lisa Loeb, and Lisa Loeb was huge during this time because a couple of years back, from when this was being filmed, she had the biggest hit on radio at the time with the song Stay. And I always thought that Lisa Loeb was really cute. And so that was one of my favorite episodes. And she ended up going and doing a bit of a song at the end of it, which was a very famous song that uh, she never recorded for any of her albums. But I thought it was great. All right, this next song is a request. 
best. Trevor, this is for you. I used to be much cooler than this. <laughs> in the 1990s every single guy had a thing for Tiffany Amber Thiessen from Saved by the Bell okay she appears as one of the uh, focuses of one of the episodes later in the only season of this show Good morning. I'm guessing cream and sugar? No. Black with skim milk on the side. Oh. Well, would that be for you or 300 pound in the basement, Stephanie? Want me to get a straw? Maybe they can drink it through the crack in the door. Okay. You've made your point. Really? Well, what's my point? That you're sweet. Nope. Sorry. It's not my point. So this wasn't in any way, shape, or form a low-effort show. Getting getting some big names in there. In fact, the Pretenders ended up doing the theme song for this show. And this, I think, is the reason why it is that this show has never made it to DVD. It has never made it to any of your streaming services. In fact, the link that we have in the description to be able to get every single one of these episodes is being streamed on YouTube with no issue from YouTube. Why is that? Well, a lot of these were VHS recordings, as you could tell from the clips that we had. There is nothing in HD or even really uh, crystal clear 520p. There's not a DVD release that's not streaming anywhere except for the recordings people had made on YouTube or had placed on YouTube. They probably recorded them on VHS and put them up on YouTube. Entire episodes. This is all that has survived. I think a lot of it probably comes down to the same issue, why it is that you're not going to be able to find Cold Case for purchase on, say, for instance, iTunes or Vudu. You're not going to find it on Netflix. You're not going to find it on Paramount Plus or any of the other streaming services. And it's because during the time of the 90s, the license to broadcast a show with certain songs, you would have to renegotiate with those record labels, you would have to renegotiate with those artists in order to have those songs on a TV show that is being released on DVD or any type of home media. During the late 90s, home media was not being released in terms of full seasons There were some here and there, but it wasn't like every single thing needed to be digitized, made available for home media. That didn't come for a couple of years later. A couple of years later, 
that ended up being a thing. So the licenses that were negotiated at this time were not for the selling of home media. And this show, Cupid, would use a lot of top 40 songs. Not only did the Pretenders have an amazing introduction with their song Human, but also the big hit by Jennifer Page, Crush, was featured in this show, as well as the cover song performed by Lisa Loeb in one of the most loved episodes of this show. I guarantee you there had to be a lot of hoops to jump through in order to say, we want to take this episode with this music and sell it. And the music is an important part of this show because the music and where, and where it plays is one of those things that it really adds to the emotion of every single scene within this TV show. It really is a part of the show. So to replace it with, say, stock sounds or stock music or something like that, it really would take a lot away from the charm of this TV show. Now, this show was created by Rob Thomas, who gained a lot of notoriety with the TV show Veronica Mars. I'd never saw Veronica Mars. Still have not seen an episode to this day. I know nothing about it. But with the notoriety of that show, and given the fact that E! Entertainment said that Cupid was brilliant but canceled and put on their list of TV shows that were brilliant that should not have been canceled, but ultimately were. Rob Thomas decided to bring Cupid back. But at this time, Paula Marshall had gone on to do other things. Jeremy Piven was killing it as Ari Gold on Entourage. And so a whole new cast had to be brought in, and they decided to retell the same story, in fact, the pilot episode of the new series in 2009 was exactly the same as the first episode of the 1999 series, and it really feels like a dollar store version of the original series. The amazing cinematography that was there in the original series was not there in the new series. The writing wasn't as good. The comedic quips were not there with the same amount of hilarity that they were in the original series in 1999. And also, well, let's just be honest. The characters that were cast to portray these characters that we had grown to love in the 1999-1998 iteration of this show, they seemed like a Bollywood version of the original show. Here's the trailer for the 2009 version of Cupid. This is gonna blow Ali's mind. Ali, I'm here. Someone has pulled quite a prank tonight. Hey! Happy New Year, officers! <laughs> Trevor Pierce is either completely insane. He believes he's Cupid? He's steadfast on that point. Or he's the god of love. Love is all around, no need to waste it. Or possibly both. He's all yours now. Hello, Mr. It's Cupid. Cupid. I'm Claire McRae, one of the doctors here. I suppose you'd like me to disrobe. Oh, won't be necessary. Either way, he's a man on a mission. 200 mortals matched. 100 happily ever afters before I'm allowed back. Back where? Mount Olympus. Of course. 
If he can prove he's not insane. Tell me about Olympus. Non-stop clothing optional party. You just described the Playboy Mansion. If he can get the world to believe in love again. You're the guy who changed the ball drop sign. Spread the word, people. Holly had a magic moment with a guy in a pub in Dublin. He's here. He's looking for her. And that good people is love. If he can match a hundred couples. Love at first sight is a myth. Love is heat. Chemistry. Sex. Yeah. Love is what's left after the heat and the passion die. Wow, who ripped your heart out? He might find everything he's been looking for. You say you're on a mission to match 100 couples. We find a man and a woman. Have you not been paying any attention? I only get credit for a match if it's true love. The kind of love you'd cross oceans to find. Romeo and Juliet counts. The Romeo and the coat check girl doesn't. From the creator of Veronica Mars and ABC Studios. Be bold. You're looking for a helpable, transcendent connection. Comes the story of one man who will do whatever it takes. Where are you? Opportunity is knocking my friend. Go. To make love happen. So what can I get you? Sex on the beach? No. Screaming orgasm? Um. After hours grope on a lunatic's futon? Cupid. Think about it. Now this one didn't last anywhere near as long as the original. Which I'm sure from looking at the trailer you could probably guess. This one lasted eight episodes. The original run of Cupid lasted 13 episodes, 12 of which aired on ABC. Another one later aired on Global TV in Canada. It had ran a couple of years in Canada and was a big hit over there. After it was canceled on ABC. So, to wrap this up, if you want to go and check out these episodes, you want to give a look at them for yourself, we have a playlist linked down below to somebody else's channel that has gone and uploaded every single episode. And in some of them, I think they've actually restored to the best they could, some of them. It would be great to one day get an HD version of this show. This is one of the shows that I would say is made for everybody. It did not get the marketing that it deserved. Maybe it didn't get the time slot that allowed it to compete within the market at the time. The writing was phenomenal. The cinematography and the direction was outstanding. The chemistry with the cast of Jeremy Piven, Paula Marshall, and Jeffrey Sams was beyond, I think, what they had in Entourage. But there's a lot of elements of Entourage that you find in Jeremy Piven's character of Ari Gold. You find a lot of the same personality, except for the being a total jerk part, <laughs> in Trevor Hale, a.k.a. Cupid. Now, the idea for this show, it was later asked to Rob Thomas what it was, how it was that the show was going to end. Would we find out if he was really Cupid or was he a guy that was basically crazy? Well, the idea for the 100th match of this show would still leave you wondering if he was or if he wasn't. Because one of the things that we learned in... Um, the first season, the only season, is that if he ended up knocking boots with a human woman, he would lose the chance to go back to Mount Olympus. Well, the idea that Rob Thomas had for the series finale, if it made it to where Cupid got his 100 matches, would be for Cupid, Trevor Hale, and Dr. Claire Allen to end up together. That was the idea. That's the way the uh, show was supposed to end. Sadly, we never got to see the journey up to that. We never got to see that episode. But go and check out these episodes. I think it'd be something that every single one of you would really like. It's not TV like they make today. This is the good stuff. Great writing, great directing, Great acting, 
and amazing cinematography. Go ahead and check it out. All right? Guys, thank you for joining me here today. I want to wish you all shalom bracha, peace, and a blessing. Let us know if you want us to continue doing episodes on TV shows that were either really great and forgotten or ones that were absolutely horrible and forgotten. Let us know if you liked this episode where we talked about Cupid. And let me know as well. Did you ever see this show? Have you gone and checked out some of the episodes that we left in the link in the description? Let us know. I'd, I'd be interested to get your take on this show as well, because I have not heard anybody talk about this show. All right. Thanks, guys. Shalom, bracha. Peace and a blessing. Shalom.